Last week we showed you how to build an internet bike from Wiggle. We've since had lots of interest and requests from people who've purchased from Chain Reaction. And your wish is our command. The process is very similar, but here is our guide. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is of course open the box. Just be careful as you open the box if it's secured with staples like this because they can be sharp, but they do secure it very firmly. Inside, it's very well packaged. And after we've taken that cardboard box piece out, we'll be able to remove the entire bike. And as you can see, it's almost complete. Wheels are both on it. All we need to do is put the handlebars onto the stem. Also inside the box, another much smaller box. In here, we will have our receipt, some compulsory reflectors to go on the spokes, plus a load of manuals for the different components on the bike. More reflectors for the front and rear. We've also got this, which is a guard, which you can put between your cassette and your spokes. You've got a bell. There we go and a few Allen keys. So if you don't have your own Allen key set at home, you'll be able to assemble things completely here. Now you'll notice that there aren't any pedals, but that's normal. If you're going to spend this much on a bike, the likelihood is that you'll have your own personal clipless pedals ready to put on. Chain Reaction also supply their own bottle, some high five energy drink, and in fact they've got a multi-tool here as well. So now it's time to remove the rest of the packaging from the bike. Do things fairly carefully. Firstly, so that you don't scratch the frame in any way whatsoever, but also in case you need to reuse this packaging to send the bike back. Almost there, but before I take the bubble wrap away from the handlebars, I'm just going to remove the front end of the stem. Now when you take this bit off, make sure that you, of course, don't lose any of the screws, but also that you don't lose any of the washers which go on them. Just get the bars roughly central, doesn't need to be exact just yet. And start putting the screws in one at a time. Not tight, just a few turns to get them started. So at this point it should be reasonably centred but I haven't done it up tight by any means. Just going to take the rest of this packaging off the bar tapes and then before we do these bolts up to the correct torque, we can just adjust the height of the hoods. Now this is something that you might need to adjust more at a later point, perhaps after you've been riding. Get next to the saddle, you should have some idea roughly where you want these hoods to be. And once you've gotten to a certain point, where you feel comfortable, then it's time to do the bolts up fully. Now, most manufacturers, and we also, would recommend that you do this using a torque wrench. You'll see on the top of the stem here, it says five newton meters. That's what they recommend that you do these bolts up to. And the other thing to consider is that there's an equal gap at the top and the bottom where you do the bolts up. You don't want to have one fully shut and the other one with a huge gap. But for the time being, I'm just gonna do the bolts up if I feel, and I should double check that with a torque meter a little bit later on. Now you'll of course need to get the bike into the right position for you, which means adjusting the saddle to your normal height. And the same thing with the handlebars. This is as high as it will go, but you can of course lower it by taking these spaces out and either cutting the steerer tube down or placing them on top of the stem. It is also worth double checking. They've tightened these two bolts, which clamp the stem onto the steerer tube and also that they've put the stem perfectly straight with the front wheel, which they have. Next, we're just going to go over a few more things before we head out on the bike. To start with, you saw that this came already assembled with the wheels in, but it's a good chance now just to check that these quick releases are adequately secure. Next up, we're going to have a quick look at the brakes. Now pull on one at a time, start with the front one, just rock the bike, make sure it locks the wheel. Same for the rear one, and then just have a very quick look to make sure that the calipers are centered. You want the brake pads to be equidistant away from the rim. And whilst we're here and have the front brake on, we can check that the headset's tight. Just rock the bike forwards and backwards, and you should be able to feel at the top of the head tube here if there's any movement. There isn't here. And at the same time, just check that the steering is free and smooth, which just leaves a couple more things. First of all, the tyre pressure. Now again, these have come pumped up, but probably not to the correct pressure and the recommended pressure for these tyres will be written somewhere on the side wall. We tend to use around about 100 psi in dry conditions. For that, of course, you're going to need a track pump, which has a gauge either at the top or the bottom. Once you've done that, all that's left to do is simply to mount your own pedals onto the cranks, and then you can take it around the block and just go through all the gears to make sure that they're working properly. Well, now that you've got your new bike, you'll want to learn how to ride it, and you can do that by checking out our how-to playlist, clicking here. And after you've ridden it for a while, you'll need to know how to maintain it. And you can find out exactly how by clicking here.